Ladies and gentlemen, and what I can only hope are zero boys and girls, welcome to the infinite regression. Yes, this veil of sorrows, this uh, place of sadness and terror and I don't know, whatever the fuck you happen to be feeling at the time just goes on and on and doesn't stop and it's in your face. It's like, hey, I don't stop, but you will somewhere back here. You're going to fucking run out of days. Oh my God. And then what are you going to do? You're going to lay down right back here and you will be forgotten. Anyway, hey, but infinite regression gives way to this shit. Holy fuckerollies. What? Huh? Who the fuck? What the how? Who fucked whom? Up the ass for how long and for how much money for us to be able to fucking afford numbers that have this type of a gradient on them. Huh? What? Anyway, hey, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's keep this going. Let's keep it moving. I think next slide might have something to do with anything. Hey, oh my God. Holy fuckerolies. Um, I think, uh, I gotta go around the horn like usual. Hey Braxton, how you feel about Fiddy? You feel, you feel like we should both take a hit off of this? This is, what is this, some sort of, uh, sativa? This is Girl Scout cookie? Is what you're telling me? It does not taste like Girl Scout cookies. It has a certain lemony zest. But, uh, hey, three... Two, one. Hey there, friend. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, whoo, that'll kick in. That'll get you there. Anyway, Braxton, thank you for introducing me to the devil's lettuce and probably ruining my life with your fucking gateway drug bullshit. Uh, thank you for that, you fucking asshole. Anyway, but it's 50. I can't believe we did it. Ian, I can't believe we did 50 without anyone recognizing that we were fucking doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Normally you do something and like somebody fucking notices, even by accident, you know? But this, we've been doing it and nobody by accident. Like not even YouTube was like, our algorithm says that you stay here. <laughs> And no one will know what you have done. <laughs> and it's probably for the best. But you know what? Thanks to your advertising acumen, we have stayed in obscurity. And I don't know whether to thank you or kick you in the balls, but your ugly ass pimple face makes me want to kick you in the balls. Hey, Chaz. Speaking of people I want to kick in the balls, hey, hey there. Hey there, friend. I see you've rebounded with another girl from your daughter's friend group. That's fucking great. Yeah, you didn't learn from the last one. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, uh, you're amazing. That's, wow. Uh-huh. You are Mr. Walking Cliche, and it's gross, and we hate it. And I am 87% certain that the front of your hair is not real. The back of your hair, sure, sure. The front part, I think that's a tube, mon frunde. You gonna let me tug the rug? You gonna let me tug the rug? It's 50. It's 50, my friend. You give me a little tug, Ruski. Let me give you a little fucking tug. Give me the fucking... Oh my God. It is a fucking toop. I knew it, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. It's a fucking toop this whole fucking time. Oh my god, Chaz, you're bald. Fucking A, dude. That is not a good look. Hey, you, 19-year-old girl who was formerly, like, bouncing on this guy's lap like he was some sort of, like... I don't know, uh, filling in for a father figure who molested you, I'm guessing. Anyway, hey, hey, 
how you feel about letting him molest you later tonight. Is you still going to let that happen? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you are not. Oh, my God. You got to figure out about this real hair, this fake hair, this hair right here. I got my hat. It's fake ass hair. Not even good fake hair. It's all fucking synthetic -y and shit. Now that I touch it, I'm like, Ugh. you know what I'm saying? Here, take this fucking weasel. Get it out of here. And, uh, oh, your friend is leaving, Chaz. Oh, your friend who could barely walk in those high-heeled ass shoes. Oh, she's leaving. Oh, it's so sad to see her go. Fucking get someone your own goddamn age, you fucking weirdo. And while you're at it, why don't you get us a fucking decent person to work in fucking advertising because nepotism is not working out for us. Anyway, you know what else is not working out. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you who else is not working out. Uh, Clarissa. Clarissa is not working out in terms of like, she had a brief, a brief thing where she was like, you know what? I'm going to do the steps. I'm going to do all them steps. And so she's like, all right, let go, let God. And she got weirdly religious for a minute and started inviting us all to church. And, uh, yeah, she had actually never been to church. And when they busted out the wine, that fucking wrecked her and threw her back off. And she was like, God damn it, body of, or blood of Christ, body of Christ, you... That's just fucking wafers. <laughs> you can buy them in the cheese section at your local supermarket. Get them peppery ones. Those are fucking good. You put some... Get one of those. You get some of that, like, good-ass pepperoni. You know, like, not the fucking, you know, cheap-ass, like, in the pre-cut in the bag kind. You ask the fucking butcher to slice you off some of their fucking pepperoni. And then you take some of that fucking pepperoni and then you get an aged cheese. A fucking aged cheese. We got this one. It's called the Dubliner. It's an Irish cheese. Holy Moses. Hey, you put some of that on there with some good ass pepperoni and some body of Christ. Oh, the peppered body of Christ. That's the good shit. Anyway, you could buy that in your grocery store in the fucking cheese aisle Just look look in the cheese aisle next time you're there tell me if those do not look exactly like the body of christ anyway uh you don't have that guy with a weird ass crumb catcher to be like oh, we can't let any of the body of christ fall anyway hey i don't know how we got weirdly religious and this is definitely going over 10 minutes but Fuck me in the ass. Anyway, you got all weirdly religious. You tasted the blood of Christ. And then you were back on the wagon. Off the wagon. Off the wagon. Think off the wagon is the one. Thinking about that episode of Seinfeld. And that'll, that'll get us right. Anyway, so. That's a thing, apparently. And, uh, so, yeah, you, Clarissa, you're not doing well. You did, like, two steps worth of AA, and now you're back on the sauce. So that's incredible. And, uh, Kaysen over here is back trying to get at your fun bags with both hands. So protect your womanly virtue, woman. And, and fucking, you know, maybe don't, oh, god damn it. She's no, she's not putting up a good fight. And you know what, Aiden, if you weren't such a fucking waste of everything, I, I would fucking ask you to step in and help. But this is a lost fucking cause uh, trying to defend the, the honor of a woman who has no honor and no interest in defending what little she may have had once upon a time. Anyway, hey, let's get set. Oh, under 10. Nice. Hey, self five. Yeah, I'm the only person who'll give me five. Don't record that part. It's fucking sad. Anyway, hey, let's get Stanley the Manly out here to say this. You gotta say it with a nice booming voice. You gotta be like, 
it's the mega ultra super extreme you know what i'm saying like do it like big like do it big time like go f you can't go too big on this one okay just have fun with it just have fun with it okay just make it your own all right here we go stanley the manly step up to the microphone <laughs> It's the Mega Ultra Super Extreme Amazing Incredible Weekend Type Fun 50th Episode Extravaganza. I said big, you fucking asshole. Oh, did threaten lawsuit again. Well, fuck you, because guess what? After tonight, we're shutting it down. Oh, shit. I wasn't supposed to tell everyone. Oh, God damn it, everybody. Well, it's about time you knew. Uh, yeah. Viewership has really fallen off, and, you know, I'm not enjoying the process of making these as much, and maybe there are other things that I could do and um, of a comedic vein, of a creative out outlet t kind of thing. So maybe we'll do some of that shit, and maybe it doesn't need to be all about the weekend-type fun every goddamn time, you know? Maybe give other things a chance. And so this is the last one of these I'm going to do for a while. I don't know how long. Maybe ever. Who knows? So, yeah. That's, that's what it is. Ha! <laughs> Celebration! It's an extravaganza! God damn it, Stanley the Manly. This is your fucking fault. If you'd gone big, I wouldn't have fucking... Spilled the beans on the shit, make everybody depressed. Fuck you, Stanley. Sue, I don't give a fuck at this point. There's nothing to win. You know what I'm saying? You already took what you're gonna take, and there's nothing after this. So fuck you, Stanley. Anyway, with your host, Rem Pemberton of the Clemson Pembertons. That's me. I'm still as pixelated as ever. People have been saying I look non-pixelated in this picture. This my mustache is not pixelated, and neither is my monocle. I mean, is your monocle pixelated? Fuck no. That's why you don't get to be the host. Anyway, regardless. <laughs> hey, come on, Rem, play that super fancy theme. Yeah, I'm in Tuxed Tales and shit. Let's play this good shit. Well, now, doom, 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 this doom, has doom, always doom, been the theme song. This has always been the theme. This has always been the theme song. This has always been the theme. Cha. Okay, I hope that was loud enough because I didn't remember to adjust the levels until it was playing already. And it seemed a little quiet, but fuck, I don't know. We're not doing two takes. We don't have that kind of fucking time, okay? So get your shit together and let's just fucking go. This week's episode, a total cop-out. Or a look at the funniest slides from each of our 50 episodes. That's right. We're going to take the funny slides from each of the 50 episodes and turn them into a fucking thing. Here we go. From episode number one. This guy. Ah, oh, fuck. Remember when, when it was wrestlers that looked like Dwayne The Rock Johnson and the juxtaposition of titties and blonde titties and Dwayne The Rock Johnson Ha! Comedy. We started off strong as shit. That's the one where I was doing all the back, like, bah, 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 you know, like, <laughs> where I was going back, and, like, anytime I messed up, and I made sure to mess up a lot. So I just go back to the beginning, and I was pissing myself off with, by the end. Yeah, we started off well. This was great. What a great episode. Oh, that's right. These are inappropriate euphemisms for being gay a sin against god and man a sin for which the penalty is extra spicy taco bell diarrhea straight out of god's anus yeah that's that's some good that's good writing that's what that is 
That's just a beautiful slide. I enjoy that. And even if it wasn't the first one, you know, we did all right. We put some good things in there. All right. Episode number two. Here we go. Fixed it. Okay. Mm so <laughs> this is one of those things that's funnier when you're high, probably. But I was when I was high and I was writing these slides, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Caves have dicks on them. They're just swinging there, swinging low, sweet chariot. And uh, somebody better censor them K dicks. But the funny thing about it, this was intentional, is that I fixed it. Mm K, there's a K right here that's not censored. This is censored, and this is like being smug at how I fixed it, you know? So it's double funny that I. It's the kind of thing that's not really funny. But it's a detail that I give a crap about. Nobody gives a crap about details about a show that nobody fucking watches. There's some behind the scenes shit. There's some DVD bonus features on some shit people didn't watch the first time around. So, you know, hey YouTube, you wanted some shit to play commercials during? I'm giving you some shit to play commercials during. Hmm. They could give you some Liberty Mutual, and you're going to hate your own eyeballs and want to pluck them out. Anyway, just remembering, I remember this one time when it was all blood and chaos in the streets, and there was this woman who was screaming and crying, Think of the children. Will someone please think of the children? She seemed to cry more when I asked if I could only think of the cute children. <laughs> That's that's just good writing right there, cause like you know the whole thing like I did a whole jag about like who wants to think about ugly kids? Come on, this is bullshit. If I have to think about the kids, I want to think about the cute kids. <laughs> uh, man, it's it's a certain type of okay. Anyway, which brings us to episode number three. Are you a woman? First of all, wow, congrats on losing the genetic lottery. Good luck with your dingus match set of chromosomes. Oh, that's right. This is from the uh, drug commercials for drugs that don't get drug commercials. Do you get sad sometimes? Seriously, as if leaving you at home with no other options in your life wasn't enough. Now you want to tell me you're crying into the laundry just because it's a chore that never stays done? What? What does that even mean? Did you ask? You might ask your husband if you can take a part-time job as a receptionist, but he'll just remind you that that's a job for unmarried uggos who can't get a man. So what can you do? You can take a little yellow pill. Wash it down with a box of Chardonnay, and all your problems will melt away. Heck, you might even learn to enjoy the laundry. Oh my god, Clarissa, shut up. That was not based on your actual life events. This is based on a hypothetical woman who went to rehab and turned it around. Yeah, why don't you fucking do that? Then maybe we'll say it's about you. Anyway... And then, in episode four, conundrum number two, mustache equal sign gay, San Francisco Giants pissed pitcher with a wispy boy mustache equal sign you are this gay. And then nothing else, episode four, not great. Not a lot of high class comedy in there. You go back and listen like, the, okay, the slides are not good. Like, maybe I said some funny shit, like, just on a whim, but, you know, making it up as I go along. Improvising, as they say in the business. But, like, there's no fucking way that any of it was from the slides, because those slides are shit. Anyway, episode five. <laughs> Books nobody checks out at the library. The Richard Gere hamster story and other weird things your cousin told you. 
That is true. That is where I heard that story. <laughs> My cousin was like, yeah, you know about Richard Gere? And I'm like, I fucking don't. And he's like, you know, Richard Gere. <laughs> and I'm like, no, brosif. And he's like, hamster up the asshole, dude. Everybody knows it. And so, like, yeah, everybody knew that story. And and we still liked Richard Gere was the funny thing. We're like, yeah, he's in Pretty Woman. That's good. Someday he'll be in fucking Chicago, and that'll be really good. And we'll be like, man, can he really tap dance? Anyway, you know but we like him we like him hamster up the asshole or no we still like Richard Gere and I don't think we're wrong maybe we are maybe there's some like me too shit about Richard Gere where uh I would yeah men powerful men of a certain era you just kind of have to be like oh boy (laughs) just waiting for that other shoe to drop you know Oh, God. Because you know what? Here's a fun fact. The only black man ever to set foot inside my home, other than the EMT who took my father to the hospital a couple years back uh, when he had a blood clot in his lung and he nearly died. Um, Anyway, yeah, one black man entered my home on that occasion in Carnates Est, you know, like in person. The only other black man to enter my home in any way, shape, or form as a child was fucking Bill Cosby in The Cosby Show. Like, that was very fucking important. I mean, my parents wouldn't always let us watch A Different World, which was on after The Cosby Show. They were a little wary of, like, oh, there's some college issues in here. We need to keep the kids away from that shit. You know, but like the Cosby show, man, it was fucking hilarious and I loved it. Like, God damn, he really was America's dad. Like, he really did like instill good morals in an entire fucking generation of people. And then it turned out that he's a fucking creepazoid. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about all the goodwill that people have for fucking Mr. Rogers you know what I'm saying? Like, like that. Like, that's where Bill Cosby lived before. See, it's funny now because kids, like, I'll talk to kids. They'll be like, yeah, everybody knows Bill Cosby's fucking drugging ladies and then, you know, uh, raping them and shit. And it's like, no, we did not always know that. <laughs> like, that was very much a secret because in the meantime, he was the only black guy who was welcome in my home for the first fucking 20 years of my life. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. (laughs) Okay, moving on. Sabado Gigante. Guys with hearts full of crushed dreams and no disposable income stand in a parking lot with their bored wives. Oh my God. Sometimes you just say the truth out loud. And it's not like funny as much as it is a like cogent observation (laughs) uh so number six a review of table wines from le grand cure de gelatino vineyards le old boot is zinfandel felt like an immaculately beautiful french woman blasting a three-day-old onion fart directly into your face five stars (laughs) Because who wouldn't want that? Three-day-old onion fart. This is a little backed up on farts, I guess. Uh, The swarthy foreigner at Malbec. Tastes very much like my manservant Pedro's most ticklish regions. Why do I know what they taste like? Honey, I'm here to review your dang wine, not interview with the Inquirer. Five stars. Episode number seven. Are you having pun yet? Number one. Oh, God damn it. These are terrible. My transgendered girlfriend and I just broke up. 
It was the difference of life goals, I guess. I kept saying I wanted kids, but my girlfriend was always saying the opposite. I want to put my baby in you, I would shout, not caring if the neighbors heard, heard us or not. But my girlfriend would always respond the same way. I don't have womb for a baby. <laughs> Is this the punchline? Uh, you fucking moron. This is back before I was swearing in my episodes. In my episodes, man. Back before swear words. God damn it. Can you remember? Back before swear words. You know what's funny is that my significant other, who is the one that I was protecting, you know, from hearing me saying all the shit that I fucking think while under the influence and I was trying to protect her and be like, I'm a total normal guy, you know? And yeah, <laughs> she's the one who's like, just fucking cut loose. Stop it with this shit where you're just not saying what you mean. Just say what you mean and be done with it. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was trying to make a baby with a trans woman, and she's like, I don't have womb for a baby. Remember that in that joke, I was dating a trans woman. Oh, yeah, before you all start judging me, remember that in that joke, I was dating a trans woman, and not only that, I wanted to build a life with her. If anything, I should be upset with you for not automatically assuming... I'm for not automatically assuming I'm not willing to make a hypothetical relationship with imaginary trans woman work because I would. Oh, and by the way, when I imagined that imaginary trans woman, I also imagined that she was black. So you might be a racist. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying maybe you might want to take a couple of Buzzfeed quizzes is all, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. New thing. Items for my bucket list. Number one, see the movie The Bucket List. <laughs> because I've heard about nothing but bucket lists, and I do not have a bucket list, nor have I seen the movie. Anyway, episode number eight. Part one. Oh, this is right. I have to go all um, hoity-toity. But that's how I went in the original, so why don't I go the opposite of hoity toity? Why don't I have this guy over here? Go on. Okay, part number one. A non exhaustive list of ways in which unscrupulous persons have murdered me. Uh, that's right. Lord Chattering Codswallop the fourteenth convinced a bull elephant that I was a female bull elephant in heat. The excited male cleft my anus in twain, and I was left to bleed the remainder of my life's blood out of my gaping rectal wound. The pain was unspeakable, but I happily passed on after a few hours. Oh, number two. I was shot in the left testicle with a blunderbuss, after having been caught, shall we say, in an indecent state with the wife of a visiting foreign dignitary whose name escapes me at the moment. His wife's name was Kunigunda, and she had double-jointed breasts. Okay, other ways to not be gay. It's probably best to not think about this picture because... Jesus trying to give you a little peekaboo. Look at his happy trail. Happy trails to me. Yeah, I remember the original things that I said about it. Like, boop. Yeah, Jesus trying to give me a little peekaboo. A little look. A little something, something. Like, a little, uh, you know, take a look at this. Carrot and taters, you know. Take a look at this. Uh, sausage and beans, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking trying to give me a looky loo and you know what i look i fucking look jesus i don't fucking care anyway episode nine before we get too gay or too blasphemous 
Speakers from a guy in a van. Because if anyone knows speakers, it's some guy who is independently wealthy enough to afford his own van. Insanely complex, uh, complex board games. Because we're not having fun until we're arguing over the correct interpretation of one of the game's many rules. I believe this is Twilight Imperium, this game. For those of you who are like, what's that, Cones of Dunshire? No, do you see any fucking cones on the table, you idiot? It's not Cones of Dunshire. God damn it, learn to fucking recognize anything. Anyway, episode number 10. Uh, oh, this is new words. I came up with some new words and some definitions for those words. Okay, I'm going I'm to hit a little bit more marijuana just real quick. Okay. Does not taste like Girl Scout cookies. It's got a lemony zest, though. Hmm. Okay. Word number one. Plock. Verb. To penetrate with one's genitals a hole not intended for sexual pleasure, such as a nostril, ear, etc. Say that again and I'll plock your eye socket, you wibble. Uh, word number two. Wibble. Noun. A person whose entire female ancestry consists not only of prostitutes, but prostitutes known for doing things that would make other call girls blush with shame. Don't be glad with me, you good-for-nothing wibble. Word number three. Glab. Adjective, a state of being extremely sexually aroused by the incompetence of others. I had to break up with my rocker of a girlfriend because I caught it getting all glab while watching my roommate fail to assemble an Ikea bookshelf. That brings us to episode number 11. The right kind of man doesn't want some floozy prancing out there in the latest fashions, flashing her body like a two-bit call girl. He wants a modest, thrifty, and most of all, a respectful woman. Do you have any sacks? Preferably gunny or any other drab, itchy cloth of poor quality? Make a dress of that and he's sure to see you as wifey material. Tip number four. Embrace loneliness now. A good man doesn't want a wife who interferes too much with his affairs. Not that she suspects him of having an affair for the past month when he's been working suspiciously late. What's his business is his business. And we'll always have our marriage because that's what we promised each other. So I'll be here playing the role I meant to play because that's what a good wife does. See? It's a good thing. Embrace loneliness and you will make a great wife. Episode number 12. Oh, that's right. The poems. Disappointment by Ang Steen. Souls were made of iron wings. When I felt my disappointment, depths of sorrow unknown to even adults weighed down my young, weary heart. My dipshit sister took the last strawberry pop tart, and now all we have is blueberry. No ink is as black as my disappointment. Limerick by author unknown, but sister suspected. There once was a boy from Nantucket who carried sorrows home in a bucket. When he wanted straw bear and found none were there, he cried from his eyes, cause she took it. O oh, Brother by Ace Hister You with your Y chromosome, you think you're all sad and alone? You think I care about your drying face when your gender is a disgrace to the human race? That's like a fucking poetry slam <laughs> this is a total poetry slam line like care about your dry face your gender is a disgrace to the human race like oh my god such a poetry slam line anyway 
Toxic is what we call masculinity. Divine is what we call femininity. If you piss and moan over the strawberry, well, keep crying, bitch. I won't let you hold this over me. Yeah, I feel you, sister. Good, good work. Forgiveness by a mother who once was a woman with a soul of her own. Sometimes sons and daughters sometimes fight. They sometimes say they gotta. But sons and daughters should not fight, even when they feel they oughta. So give each other a great big hug and put a smile back on your mug. The lesson of this fight, you see, is that there's blueberry for you and me. Poem by Dad. What the hell? You guys got all dramatic about a single Pop-Tart and then you all wrote poems about it? Look, I got the game on. Please don't interrupt. We have a pool at the office writing on this one. Episode number 13. Here's what I'm going to do for you, Crap Tap Johnny. That's right. I remember this episode. It did not work out well. I'm just telling you. I'm giving you an advance that I will be bailing on whatever comes next because it is extremely bailable. Anyway, it's a bailable for kids' parties if you are a terrible parent who doesn't care about the happiness and well-being of your children. Anyway... Hey, I can write new black cards for crabs against your PP, and then I'll draw white cards for my g random for my genuine Gates McFadden against Will Wheaton set, and I'll judge which is funnier. So I wrote the black cards, crabs against humidity. Um, they did the uh, the the white cards. Anyway, here we go. Number three, because one and two sucked ass. Right now, our host isn't doing his job. He's busy thinking about the American dream or the unstoppable tide of Islam. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Card number four. Why, back in my day, we didn't have fancy sex dolls with realistic faces. We had all the people I killed, and we were happy to have it. Or we had a bitch slap, and we were happy to have it. I think a bitch slap is, yeah, that's the one. Uh, anyway, episode 13, I think this is what we call a failed experiment. It did not turn out well, and we'd all be best to forget about it as soon as we can. Episode number 14. Commercial number one. Gil's House of Discount Celebrities and Celebrity Impersonators. We got them all. Neil Cubic Zirconia. He could sing all your favorite Neil Diamond songs so well, you would swear you were listening to the Jewish Elvis himself. Glenn Farr. She looks exactly like Glenn Close, just not up close, though. Justin Woodpond. He can pretend to have been in any of your favorite boy bands. Wrong side of the tracks, boys. Mm, can, oh, that's sorry. That's a, 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 a fucking asterisk mm, concurrence. Uh, 36.66666667 degrees Celsius. <coughs> sorry. Need beverage one way. And the new children in the neighborhood. That's Justin Woodpond. Get it, Wood Pond? It's not a timber lake. Holy fuck, this audience. God damn. Stevie Wonder, we just kidnapped the real performer and tell him that your living room is another sold-out show at Madison Square Garden. Sure, it's unscrupulous, but how else can you get the genuine article at rock-bottom prices? Could you please... Gently pat your opera gloves together for Lawrence Cable Repairman. I remember this bit. We're about to... These are uh, <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy jokes, but in hoity-toity 
type English. It's kind of an idea, but not really. I once shared a m modest estate with a woman who... Uh, I don't want to do the voice. I'm not in the mood to do the voice. I know it's the 50th, but fuck it. I will do a different voice. I won't share the modest estate with a woman who, due to the size of the estate and my often aloof nature, had no idea I was inhabiting the estate with her at all. I command you to do her. That's right. If you don't think that's funny, I don't know. You're probably right. I once found myself in a gentleman's club and was perplexed to find myself being forced to pay for the company of a courtesan with whom I had shared a gentlemanly waltz when she complained of my paying her sum in children's play money, stouting, Surely this is counterfeit. I retorted, So are your bosoms, young madam. I command you to do her. Okay, there is apparently a television program about obese persons who wish to decrease their surplus body mass. I am not a viewer of this program. If, I, if it were my wish to observe various persons, all of whom are contending with the, their rotund figures, I would attend a family gathering. I command you to do her. Oh, God, thank goodness. That was tedious as shit. Episode 15, we're getting there. Chart number th one, things I will and won't do for love. I will run right into hell and back. Never lie to you, and that's a fact. Be there till the final act. Take a vow and seal the pact. Do anything you've been dreaming of. Raise you up, help you down, get you out of this godforsaken town. Make it all a little, a little less cold. I'll hold you sacred or hold you tight. Colorize your life. You're so sick of black and white. Make it all a little less old. Make you some magic with my own two hands. Build an emerald city from these grains of sand. What the fuck? That went zero to impossible real quick. God damn it. Anyway. Um, give you something you can take home, like a nice gift bag or some shit. Cater to your every fantasy. I would hope that these are covered if I'm going to have to build an emerald city from sand. Well, then shit. I hope your fantasies aren't more crazy than that. God damn it. Hose you down with holy water when you get too hot. Hot. I'd take you places you've never known. Maybe that emerald city I just fucking built. How can you think you've been there? I just fucking built it with these two monos. Anyway, these are things that I will not do for love. So I would do anything for love except for these things specifically. Forget everything. Consider it an interlude and or fling. Move on. Turn to dust, fall down, and I absolutely will not screw around. Uh, now, these are the wills versus the wants, just to the raw numbers, so you can see that pied out. 76% wills, only 24% knows. Um, this is some market research on proposed meatloaf song name changes, because like, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Uh, is uh, not that catchy of a song title. So we went, we went, did some market research. Here's some options: love, wills, and won'ts, and not not the lowest, but not too high. I would do more for love than you'd think. Uh, that gets to the point. I like that. Captain loves list of wills and won'ts. Uh, people seem to respond to the idea of Captain Love a little bit. Anyway, American Pie, people did not like that name. Uh, so let's not release a song under that name, for Christ's sake of tease. Um, 
And finally, a non-exhaustive list of actions, real and imagined, literal and hopefully metaphorical, which I will and won't take for love. That describes the song very accurately, and we're going with that. Um, hey, this is my interest in seeing more charts versus the audience's interest in seeing more charts over time. Okay. So, like, when I was born, I was like, yeah, I'm ready for some fucking charts. Then, by the time I started this video, I was like, ah, fuck these charts. I've seen these charts. And then, by the time the first one, I was, like, pretty much the same. Uh, after the second one, I was like, god damn, these charts, they suck ass. And after the third one, I was like, fuck me. And then, uh, in the robot-dominated future, like, this chart and the fact that the future will be dominated by robots gives me hope for charts you the audience not a fan of charts at birth i don't know what the fuck that's about when, when we started this video you were like give me some goddamn charts slide decline after the first slide decline after the second after the third slight increase but like robot dominated future you don't want charts really really okay okay different priorities i guess Hey, here's the collage of Davids. Speaking of David Cosby, noted comedian and also rapist, there he is, David Cosby. Got your David Bowie, your David Tennant, your David Carradine, your David Barry, your David De La Michelangelo, your David Grohl, your David Copperfield, your David and Goliath, your David Letterman. David Crosby. There you go. Uh, episode number 16. Please to have play because Becky still be a national anthem now. Oh, that's right. This national anthem is a real fucking piece of work if I remember correctly. And I do. It's not good. Small ash peace that's you. Ah, the oh, shit. Bliot. <laughs> the neo shit on the end. Ugh. Translative lyrics for Americans who do not speak mother tongue. Hail, hail, Kurzbeck, Stovia. It is place of we coming from. We all have same positive feeling about glorious leader. He wears the bearskin hat. And if other men dare to take it from his head, they will become new glorious leader. But last guy who tried to take head is death from machine gun bullets in face. If we do not want machine gun bullets in face, we will sing this song with pride. Hail, hail, Krasbekistovia. We have the birth here, and so we have pride of Krasbekistovia and not somewhere else like your American Cleveland is example. Well, that that is a beautiful national anthem. I just, I'm very struck by how beautiful it is. Diversity truly is our greatest resource. Anyway, um, list of thing my cousin Uri noticed in your America when he there one times. Number three, because one and two suck ass, apparently. <laughs> Your prostitute is prude, she ring bell like Chris Beck Estovian prostitute, but she slap the face if ask for quick one. She also tell Yuri he going to hell when he ask for Chris Beck Estovian corner dog. His sex move is fun. And she ask what is, and he tell her... And she get very angry. She say, I good, I don't do like this. And uh, Uri say, in Kersbekistovia, you not good unless you do this. <laughs> Is the way. Uh, your American Black IP music band group is terrible. 
It's like war crime set to mu not quite musics. I agree. I agree with that strongly. Your American RuPaul singing woman is beautiful. Uri's want to make bargain her father. How many barrels of cured fish will make payment to marriage? Oh, this is very popular joke for making Kurzbekistovia. Is uh, you might be from Kurzbekistovia if do this thing. If have only two food group, potato and boiled goat face. If all of sister have gone on date with 1988 Olympic gypsy tossed bronze medal man Yuri Klegnikov, glorious leader make it so that no girl can say him no because he is glory of nation. Oh shit. That got ahead of myself. I have friend who pretend to be Yuri Klegnikov to get date. Who you think you're tricking, Jopa? Episode number 17. KISS is an acronym. Don't overcomplicate things. Simplify it, Jerry. Just remember, K-I-S-S. -S. -S. Don't overcomplicate things. Simplify it, Jerry. Tell them about how touching an artificial scrotum made it so you didn't want mashed potatoes anymore. Than you very much. You know what? I'm just leaving this here. I'm not even going to explain it. No. I bet you can put two and two together. Or you can go back and watch this episode. It was number 17. You can watch it and you can get this exact thing. It might be the only worthwhile thing in the entire episode. And it's early on. So there you go. Episode 18. Uh, but wait, I hear you say. Oh, this is going to be not very funny. <laughs> Buggle up, Buttercup. It's about to get blasphemous and not funny at all. Yeah, it's super awesome. But wait, I hear you say. You never said which of all the religions was the truly, truly true one with all the truth I'll need to live forever in happiness. Oh, sorry about that. In all the rush to show who was wrong, I never said who was right. Don't worry. You have believed in the right religion all along, you silly crumpet. Because you still belong to the same religion as your parents. And your parents have never been wrong about anything ever before. So you were absolutely right to not ever really question the religion you were raised in. Because all of the thousands of religions are currently damning you to their version of hell, but none of them have the truthy truth that your parents' religion has. It's just so sleep easy and remember to doubt your doubts before you doubt your faith, because this was a thing said by a person with nothing to gain from your continued faith. Sleep easy and don't think about which religions will send you to hell for being an infidel because there are literally thousands of them. Episode 19, Scrapped Version, Is It Better? Oh, this is Kurt Messages, this is Kurt Messages, text messages that never happened. Okay, here we go. Hey neighbor, hey Kurt, what's up? Well, I was thinking of voting for this one guy, but then I saw uh, uh, saw the sign in your yard that said my guy was bad and your guy was the way to go. I just wanted you to know that I you really changed my mind. I'm definitely voting for your guy now. Oh, that's the beauty of the electoral process. I, I don't think that's how that happens, but whatever. Anyway. Hey, Luke, it's Han. You there? Yeah, what's up? Well, after our last visit to Moss Eisley, Chewbacca seems to have gotten drunk on a blue drink from yellow Tupperware, and somewhere along the way he developed a taste for man flesh. I think we're going to have to put him down. Oh, sorry to hear that. Are you going to have to uh, are you going to going to have a funeral after? That's the thing. I have to find him first. Want to help? I can change. I promise. 
I'm sorry, but you're going to have to find someone else to wear the back half of your two-person horse costume because this Halloween I'm going out on my own. Babe, I'm not going to be your horse's ass anymore. Episode 19, this is the aired version. <laughs> this just in, man forgets what he's talking about and woman takes advantage of situation by insisting that whatever he was talking about, he was wrong. Local flower sales up 20% this week. Celebrity gossip is a waste of your life. Whatever the author of this slide chooses to insert as a picture below is a better use of your time. Anyway, it's late at night and we know what you want. You want suspiciously specific types of men who are both single and ready to attend to your every need. Oh my god. It's like, uh... Can we interest you in the unnaturally skinny athlete who plays some weirdo-ass game like Ultimate Frisbee or Pickleball at a world-class level? Like, he's fucking ranked, you know? Like, you can look up his name on the internet and see that he is ranked internationally in some weird-ass sh shitty fucking sport. Can we interest you in the barbershop quartet member who occasionally speaks in a somewhat racist-sounding Al Jolson accent for literally no reason? Yeah, I don't know about that guy. Can we interest you in the Wizened University English Department chair who bravely leads his staff with a set jaw, a furrowed brow, and a receding hairline? Can I? Can we interest you in... The young, non-retired guy who spends most of his weekends combing local beaches with his metal detector. He does not know how to swim and has no interest in seashells or seafood. During the week, he's like a shift manager or something, I guess. Episode 21. And now, I, Oberon Voidsel, may teach you the ways of forbidden magics. I say forbidden because there's no way your parents will like this. And if you're doing this as a way of getting back at them for being the literal worst, you're definitely in the right place. Just to prove the power of my magics, I give you... Huh. Connor O'Flaherty, captain of footballs. Some say it was the 300-pound lineman who fell on his knee. But those in the know, who know that I use magic most black to get at him for calling me a freak. Jade Millerton, my ex-girlfriend. Ugh, gross. She now experiences pain whenever she pees. Some say it's from the gonorrhea she got from all the sex she's been having with my ex-best friend, Steve. But those who know better know that I cursed her crotchetal regions. My ex-best friend Steve, who now has a pus-like discharge from his groinital area, people used to think he practiced magic until we all found it was just a ploy to steal other people's girlfriends. We kicked him out of the coven and I cursed him with gonorrhea-like symptoms forevermore. Ah. My dad, he walked into my room without knocking, and I was putting an anti-love curse on Stephen Jade, and now he seems to be confused and has been treating his co-worker David like he's my mom. I've seen them kissing in the back room and everything. He's very confused. But my anti-love curse was so strong, I can't get him to leave David alone. Episode 22, we are almost there. Okay, that's enough for make attempt at funny. I just don't know if any of this is going to work. I just finished and wish I had one funny thing to say about any of this, but I don't. Hope this doesn't suck, bro. This was episode where I just gave myself prompts and was like, improv. But then at the end, I was like, I am depressed. And there's a reason why I haven't thought about shit. 
holy shit, I was so depressed when I made this episode. I have to go back and find out if any of it is actually good. Probably not. Anyway, on to the next episode. The fake episode, which was never intended to be aired. Dick with a clit. Later realized that it was a head under the, <laughs> under there and not female erectile tissue. Uh, I also thought it might be ejaculate, like sort of drizzling down. Uh, when I looked at this costume, because I saw it in thumbnail size first, that it kept showing up in my feed, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, I know it's a dick, but what's the rest of it? Like, what's happening there? Anyway, yeah. Obviously, it's just somebody, like, because this is... Like, what this is packed in is the proper packing for this type of fucking gear. Anyway, I can't believe this is the version I'm going to post to YouTube. So I'm flying the wiener at half-mast. I'm flaving the, yeah, uh, flying the wiener at half-mast and playing taps. Yeah, I, I intend to play some taps tomorrow at some point. Uh, yeah, more like tap that ass, if you know what I'm saying. And now the wiener is sad. Uh, two thumbs down, wiener. It's a very sad, sad wiener. Joke part one. So the wife and I got into a horrible fight. It was, wait, I didn't even say what episode it is. Episode 23. God, I'm just skipping ahead. I'm just very ready to be done. So the wife and I got into this horrible fight. It was this terrible shouting match, and we were each telling the other all the things we'd been bottling up for weeks or maybe even months. I shouted at my wife, You don't even remind me of the woman I married. I stare into the mirror, and all I see is a guy I no longer know married to a woman he no longer loves. That is not how I feel about my wife, by the way. She is lovely, and I love her very much. Anyway, uh... My wife shouts back, Well, you're nothing but a slack-jawed, thick-headed, ugly-faced waste of space whose mere existence is proof that mankind is doomed. And I said right back, I says, I says, I says, um, I says, I says, Hey, I return those library books. Episode 24. This week's episode. Well, hey, Mr. Doesn't Believe in Ghosts. What about that? All right, I guess we'll find out what about that. Uh, oh yeah, orb ghosts. Like, oh, why do they all disappear when we start having digital photography? You know, what about this double exposure? Durr, like it's super easy. What about this? This is Papa Emeritus, the lead singer of Ghost, like super awesome metal band. Don't worry, you'll get to know them better as time goes on. Uh, yeah, what about this? Like, yeah, that's some hot ghostly action. What about this? That's just Patrick Swayze in Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Like, that's fucking like it's just him in a different movie it's not even bro I don't know why you're going this and talk about waffles and then going this oh shit this to talk about fucking you know uh whatever anyway uh ooh scary big boo from super mario bros uh slimer so 25 now here's the thing is i'm splitting this into two different shows you can already see we're already over an hour i do have the other show made up already so we're gonna read these and then we're gonna finish for now and then we'll do the other half of the show when we get the chance that slang thing i just told you about yes this is old people learning new people slang Aw, uh, Nals he didn't, fanboy, Nals he didn't, fanboy cuz. Explanation. Well, Gramps, I think it means 
22 skidoo on a slick Johnny if he puts his peepers on your dame's gams. Uh, I know cop drive and unchuck up the down with a twitch trap on a bucket. Uh, well, Gramps, I think it means this deuce coop took a slick Johnny on a one-way going downtown with a foreign dame sitting in the rumble seat. I guess it works. That jacket is napalm in the morning, Brasim Brasimovich. Well, Gramps, I think it means that Letterman jacket is the keenest, Slick Johnny. Uh, take this fucking Letterman jacket. This sandwich is driving the bus and hit me in different ways, bruh. Well, Gramps, I think it means this Dagwood sandwich... Uh, yeah, this Dagwood sandwich is piled high and rich enough with meats and condiments. It could have easily been made by a lowly wage foreigner. Seriously, Gramps. Well, yeah, we did it. We made it all the way through. This thing just got galled during unhandleable size. So we're going to do two. That's fine. I'm totally happy with that. Anyway... Uh, make sure to tune in for that one just as much as you did for this one, which is not at all. Anyway, that's it for this one, dinguses. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, okay. Bye.